Hey, what's going on YouTube? Alabama Reloader here. <clears throat> so it's been a couple of weeks uh, since the last video. I've been traveling quite a bit. Uh, I've got more travel coming up uh, for work, but I wanted to do a video on, uh, in the, if you watched that last video, kind of a, an update uh, video, you saw the Howa 1500 chambered in 308 Winchester. And so I've, I've messed around with 308 in the past. I've had several come through my hands and I've loaded for several 308 rifles. Um, I've never really dedicated a whole lot of time and effort to it on my, on the, on my personal rifles, on the rifles that I've owned. Um, and never, I've never really been able to, to dial in a great load in any rifle that I've owned in 308. So that's going to be the, basically the path that we're going down for that rifle. Go back, watch that video. Uh, it's the Howa 1500. Uh, it's got the Hogue stock on it, which we're more than likely going to replace that stock at some point in time. Um, but it's got a nice stock on it. Went ahead and picked up a Harris bipod for it. I've got the, I put the Cabela's Covenant 7 uh, rifle scope on uh, on that rifle. So got a pretty good setup, I think. Um, I've got some random 308 uh, loads from a previous loading session, whatever, when I had a different rifle way back when. I've got some rounds still loaded up and left over from that, so I'm gonna take those and do the break-in process, uh, and I will try to film some of that from the range when I go, but it's a it's a pretty lengthy break-in process, so I'm not gonna be able to film everything uh, just because I film on my phone, so I'll, I'll film a portion of it. Uh, but when I started looking at, okay, what what are the components we're gonna be using for this, for this rifle? Um, with the primer availability still, you know, pretty sketchy. And when you can find them, they're extremely expensive. You know, people paying way more than they should for them just due to supply and demand. Um, I was just like, you know what? I've got a, I've got a pretty large, um, not stockpile, but I've got, I've got a, a fair amount of CCI 450 small rifle magnum primers. That's what I shot almost exclusively in uh, 6.5 Creedmoor. So I've got a bunch of those. So I was like, well, I'd like to get some small primer 308 brass if I can. And so, of course, you go down that path of looking around. And I know Lapua makes some, Starline makes some. I, of course, checked everywhere for either one of those. No one had any at the time. Uh, I was looking on Optics Planet and they had some Alpha Munitions 308 uh, small primer brass. And so this stuff uh, with taxes and everything, I think it came out to $97 and some change for 100 pieces. So you're basically in the Lapua price range at that point. Uh, this stuff is, that's basically the deal with it. It's supposed to be comparable to Lapua. Um, and it's supposed to be really high quality stuff. I know they make a really good, I believe it's six Dasher, six GT. Supposedly the, that stuff's the bomb uh, when it comes to the brass and stuff that they, that they chamber for. But never tried it. Uh, this is my first uh, Alpha Munitions brass. So I wanted to basically just kind of show you, hey, Here's how it comes to you. Here's the packaging. Here's how the brass looks, blah, blah, blah. I took some measurements. I measured uh, the length of 50 pieces and I weighed 50 pieces. And so I'll just kind of compare. I don't have uh, data for 308 from, uh, I've had, I've used some Lapua 308 brass in the past, but I, I never recorded any information from that brass. So I'm just going to compare this to the consistency of a couple of different brands of 6.5 Creedmoor brass. So it's not going to be direct apples to apples in terms of the numbers. So don't worry about the numbers. Just worry about uh, sort of your average, your your standard deviation, your range, you know, the spread that you're going to see uh, between the length and the weight and all that. So in the sample size. Uh, but here it comes. It comes to you, you know, packaged nice little ammo box. Um which is pretty cool. That's nice. I mean, 
you know, you're spending that kind of money. That's the least they could do. I know Peterson does this as well. I've never used Peterson brass, but my brother uses that and he swears by it. So I'm sure that's really good stuff as well. But this is pretty nice. I do like this. That is one thing, you know, with the Lapua brass, it's like you're paying, definitely you're paying a premium price. It would be nice if they just kind of kicked in one of these as well, whatever. Um, but you just open it up. And there's all your nice shiny brass. It's got the little foam uh, insert. You'll just, you'll pull that out whenever you go. Uh, you flip these guys, you know, right side up and start uh, loading them in there when they're actually loaded ammo. You're, you're probably going to want to pull that stuff out and you're good to go. So uh, really nice brass. Just in terms of the look and feel. Um, random piece here. There's your head stamp. Alpha 308 win. And these are not small uh, flash hole. These are, I believe they're the standard, maybe 80 thousandths, I think, flash hole. So they're not the undersized flash hole stuff. So I know, you know, you kind of get into that with some people that, that produce the small primer uh, brass variant of whatever rifle uh, cartridge you're going to load for. You can get into the, uh, like the Lapua I was using. I've got some 6.5 Creedmoor. Uh, small primer, small uh, flash hole, undersized flash hole brass, but this stuff is just your standard flash hole. So, but it is small primer and that's what I wanted. So there you go. Really nice brass, really, yeah, just solid all the way around. I've, I've inspected all 100 pieces and everything looks great. I'm still gonna run them through uh, full length sizing die just to make sure the case, case mouse are around. Uh, chamfer, deburr, we'll, we'll do all all the normal stuff. Uh, I went ahead and, so after I measured them and all that, um, I did mess around with doing some flash hole deburring um, on a couple of them. I didn't feel anything. I did. I, I tried 10 pieces. I didn't feel almost any burrs whatsoever. It was, it was comparable to the Lapua in terms of that. So I'm not even gonna worry about deburring any of the flash holes. I didn't feel anything on the 10 pieces that I, I sampled and so, I'm just not going to fool with it. Um, and that, the bright spot, obviously, is just a lot. So just in case anyone is weird about that. Um, but that's it. So that's how it comes to you. Uh, really nice, nice little ammo box there. That's a good touch. Uh, so now let's just take a look at some of the numbers. So I measured 50 pieces, like I said. Here's the length. Um, and the... Your trim to length, I believe, for 308 is 2.005. I think that's what it is. Could be wrong. Go double check that. But so that's basically where we were hovering. That's our average 2.005, uh, six. <clears throat> and so our minimum of the 50 pieces was just under that. Our max just over that. So our, our spread or our range was only, it was less than six thousandths, five and a half thousandths. So that's pretty good. Um, and then on the weight side, the weight was pretty consistent. We had a couple of, I don't want to call them oddballs. That's because 1.1 grains is, is a pretty, pretty tight, um, range there on your, on your weight spread. So I don't really want to call them oddballs, but we only had one right there at that 177.8, uh, number. So that, that kind of, skewed it a little bit everything was a lot tighter it was like 177.5 i believe might have been the uh i think 177.5 or 177.6 that's what it was that that was our highest number right up until we hit that 177.8 so um you know you kick that one out you're looking at less than a grain on the weight uh on the weight spread there so that that's pretty good that's really consistent um, variation on the weight there. It's pretty tight. Uh, now, this is the, um, this is for 6.5 Creedmoor, so it's not, so don't worry about the numbers because they're not going to be comparable, but, you know, kind of things you can look at. This is Lapua brass versus Federal Premium brass, okay? Now, price-wise, your Lapua is going to be, and your Alpha are kind of, somewhat head-to-head -head price comparison. Um, this stuff was over $100 for 100 pieces. I, I can't remember what I paid now. 
I got it, picked it up over at Mr. Big Guns. He had, he had gotten in some Lapua brass and was running some, some really good deals on it. Um, it was cheaper than anywhere I'd found it online. I just, I can't remember per piece what it was, but it, it's going to be just slightly more in terms of per piece versus this, a few cents more. So n nothing crazy. So basically comparable on price. Um, but you can see there that weight, the weight spread was exactly the same 1.1 grains. Um, your, your overall, your length, uh, measurement there, your, your spread on that was only four thousandths instead of five and a half for, again, this is 308 versus 65 Creedmoor. So not exactly apples to apples, but you can kind of get an idea of the overall quality. So your, your weight and your, your length variations are pretty comparable. Um, you know, Lapua versus Alpha munitions. So really good stuff there. Now for Federal, uh, it kind of opens up a little bit more. Your weight, uh, you know, variation goes up to two grains on the difference there. And th these are only 50 piece samples, so whatever. Um, and then almost a, a tenth, or nine tenths, excuse me. Um, no, that is nine, uh, was that thousands? Nine thousands uh, in terms of your overall length difference there. So four thousandths, you know, variation versus nine thousandths, which that <clears throat> that can be somewhat concerning when you start getting into uh, your overall length measurements on your brass, and you know if you're running them through the process, and of course your brass is going to stretch and and all that and grow. Uh, throughout the reloading process and the shooting process and everything. I mean, you're already starting with brass that's, that's got nine thousandths of spread to it. So that might be a case where you want to uh, possibly trim that brass back to a standard length. You know, find that, that 1.907, kind of use that as your set point, and then trim all the brass back. Uh, four thousandths, you should be fine. That, that's That's one of those where... You know, Lapua, the way I look at it is, if you don't want to have to sort your brass or worry about any of that, buy Lapua. Looks like you could do the same thing with Alpha Munitions. Um, you know, if you're not big into sorting brass, which I am not, couldn't care less about sorting components, that's just not for me, um, then buy high quality components and you should be okay. So, if you are a bench rest competitor, I guarantee you, you don't watch this channel. So because we don't do any of that. Um, so if you're wanting to, to follow more or less that stuff, then go find other people that do that. So, uh, but I just kind of wanted to do a, a comparison between the two different brands uh, since the price points are, are very similar. So Alpha seems to be some extremely good brass. Uh, this is my first experience with them. I've talked to other folks that use Alpha, Alpha munitions uh, exclusively. They love it. So made in the USA, um, if that's, yeah, right there. American made alpha grade. Look at that. Nice little saying. So if you're big into that kind of stuff, then that's that's a bonus as well. So, but that's it. That's where we're going to leave it. Um, I'm not going to bore you guys any longer. I rambled and made this video probably about 13 minutes and 30 seconds or about, yeah, about 13 minutes longer than it really needed to be. Um, just a real quick look at the brass show you the numbers and that really is, is all there is to it so high quality stuff so that's it we will catch you guys next time uh y'all have a good one i've got to travel again for the next couple of weeks so probably not gonna be much range time at all until i get back and can actually get out on the range for the break-in period for the 308 so probably not a lot of content coming your way uh, for the next couple of weeks so but just stay tuned and once i get back we'll be able to hit the ground running start getting some of this stuff loaded up messing around with it we're going to be using the barnes 175 grain match burners uh, and imr 4064 so that's going to be kind of the combination that we're going to start off with so anyway we'll catch you guys next time y'all have a good one